I'm always fascinated and feel a bit jealous about those artists who have early found the theme and style in art that let them express themselves in the best way. They don't sit in front of the white canvas thinking what to paint. They can improve their skills constantly and don't spend hours between the craving to create something interesting and beautiful and desperation of not knowing what exactly it should be. But for the majority of us it seems to be kind of a struggle. After some observation I noticed there are two directions towards which artists work. One of them is concentrated on the inner world of a person and another one is about reflecting the reality around the artist. That doesn't necessarily mean that the second direction is about academic art. It's more about investigating the already existing nature and objects, while in the first case the artist likes to create something not existing and dive into imagination. And even though those directions could cross from time to time, or the artist can make experiments here and there, I believe one tendency is stronger than another. And I also believe that realizing which way seems more interesting for you would be the first step to finding your theme in art. I find it interesting that children and young people very often choose to paint from the imagination, since the concentration on the inner world is still so big. But with time while growing up, it might happen that the real world starts being more interesting for reflecting on the canvas than imagined one. However, I'm not saying that one way is better or more creative than another, since understanding the world around us, connecting with nature through art, can be as fascinating and magical as creating imaginative worlds on canvas. Also, if you want to make convincing art, even if it's fantasy or abstract, sometimes you need to work figuratively to improve your skills. I still meet people who are surprised when they hear that it's not common that artists can simply draw any object out of their heads. Apparently, being an artist means that you know how to make an exact drawing of a train or car engine or a group of running horses. Otherwise, what is being an artist about, right? Well, actually, the truth is that any artist could learn to draw this, but after looking at the reference, examining it and understanding the connections. Actually, that's what all artistic studies are about, and it has absolutely nothing to do with talent, since after a couple of tries it's also possible to make it out of your head, but there must be a study. I am always fascinated by artists who can draw perfect, anatomically correct body positions from any angle and perspective out of their minds. Actually, that's not drawing that fascinates me that much, but the understanding that this person has done probably thousands of studies to make this work so smoothly. I really admire their devotion and persistence. And again, nobody is born with a natural ability to draw human anatomy from inside and outside. It's only about learning and exercising. Now back to imagination and observation. I'm really interested in those two directions right now, since I feel myself in between, although the tendency in my case is stronger for the art from imagination. It has always been like that. However, I understand clearly now that since I use figurative elements in my art and it's not purely abstract, I need to know how to draw and paint those elements, how the values and colors work which makes me take a step back and get to painting simply an apple and a teapot, even though my art is not about it. I hear very often, who needs a realistic depiction of the objects nowadays anyway? And yes, some artists purposely make their art look simple and naive, yet to make it convincing and not just my kid could do this too, takes sometimes even harder than making some, let's say, plain oil landscape. I want my art to be convincing, whether it's figurative or abstract. And the only great tool for this is a master technique. Since no matter how great your ideas in art are, the lack of technique will make any message get lost on the way to the viewer's mind and heart. In my opinion, the worst thing that can happen to an artwork is when the viewer shrugs his shoulders and goes away. Now, if you can feel and understand which direction you want to go in your art and what is more interesting for you and the interest is a very important issue, it would be helpful to check what other artists do who also work in this direction. Yet, I wouldn't recommend copying the ideas, but to look precisely at what exactly you find that is interesting for you about the art of others. Would it be colors or composition or using of light? or decoration, or dark mood, or surrealistic elements, for example, there's always something particular about artworks that attracts us. 
I even once did research and wrote down all the points I like in my favorite artworks. And my taste in art is so wide, really like from ancient ornaments till medieval book illustration and ending up with Soviet propaganda posters. But after I wrote down the elements that I find fascinating in every case, I noticed that there are some key points and this has really cleared the picture for me. I think the main problem with getting inspired by other artists is that it's quite overwhelming. Today you love the work of one great artist and you are trying to work in that manner and tomorrow you see another great artist and you like his manner too. But there is absolutely no sense to dive into exact copying of all the painting manners you like. After all, one of the most important tasks for an artist is to find his own voice in the ocean of other voices. That's why it's inevitable that the best theme for your art and your style would be a reflection of your personality. Maybe it's not particularly an interest of yours, like, I don't know, animals or plants or traveling, although I know great artists who fantastically work with all those themes. It still could be something more subtle, some kind of impression or memory or perception or interpretation of anything around in the world or inside of you. And it also can change and evolve as you change, as your interest and your lifestyle change. While observing many different artists, I noticed that if you follow a younger artist over the time, you can see the changes in approach, technique, materials, as well as the whole themes can change. While, let's say, more grown-up or experienced artists tend to stick to one topic and one technique and making over and over kind of the same things, mastering them and making them unique. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that younger people are still looking for their place in the world and art reflects it, and the older ones are settled, or maybe younger artists want to try different things more, and then later, with the lack of time and getting more responsibilities, they decide to give up experiments and master only one technique. This way or another, our life would reflect in our art and it's a good thing, since the more art comes from our personality and our personal experience, the more honest and unique our art will be.